Hello and welcome to this history tutorial on cultural changes in Germany in the 1920s. This is for Edexcel GCSE Weimar and Nazi Germany. Today we will cover the cultural experimentation and innovation that took place in Germany in the 1920s. We will examine developments in art, architecture and cinema, including the work of artists like Otto Dix and film stars such as Marlene Dietrichs. There were a number of reasons why such a significant change in German culture took place and there was such an upsurge in cultural experimentation. The restrictions of the old imperial regime of the Kaiser have been removed, the new Weimar constitution allowed freedom of speech and expression, and the economic recovery after 1924 provided the money to finance the arts. The Weimar government gave grants to support art galleries, theatres, orchestras, museums and libraries. All these factors combined to bring about a blossoming of culture in Weimar Germany. This period in Germany saw the emergence of some of the most exciting art and culture in Europe. The strict censorship that had existed before the First World War was removed and Berlin began to challenge Paris as the cultural capital of Europe. Some groups in Germany though didn't approve of the changes and there was criticism from right-wing politicians like Adolf Hitler who believed that artists were undermining traditional German values. They said these cultural changes were un-German and immoral. Before the war, most German art kept away from showing everyday life in Germany and instead focused on German military successes and appealing to the prosperous middle classes. But now, most artists in Weimar Germany tried to show everyday life. They wanted art to be understood by ordinary German people, and they believed art should comment on society at the time. This new approach was associated with painters such as George Gross and Otto Dix. Otto Dix lived in the cities of Dresden and Berlin during the 20s. He searched for personalities he could include in his paintings to show the uglier side of human nature. His experiences in the First World War had encouraged him to look at life and art in this way. One of his most famous paintings showed the harsh life of Germany's war veterans and falling standards of behaviour in Germany's nightlife during the Weimar Republic. Another German artist of the time was Paul Klee. His highly individual style was influenced by new movements in art such as Expressionism and Cubism. His work, published in English as the Paul Klee Notebooks, are held to be as important for modern art as Leonardo da Vinci's work in the Renaissance. One of his most famous pieces from this time, Twittering Machine, Blended Biology and Machinery. It showed a loosely sketched group of birds on a wire or branch connected to a hand crank. The painting, however, was later removed from the National Gallery and declared degenerate art by Adolf Hitler. As well as the changes in art, architecture also flourished, especially the Bauhaus, which means school of building. These architects had a very different approach from the elaborate and decorative style of pre-war Germany. Their slogan was art and technology, a new unity. The founder of the Bauhaus movement was Walter Gropius, who believed in using only basic shapes and colours. He also had no interest in wasting space, materials, time or money. He developed new buildings using bold designs on unusual materials. The Bauhaus style stressed the beauty in technology, simple lines and careful craftsmanship. When Hitler and the Nazis came to power, Gropius had to leave Germany and eventually settled in America. Another architect, Eric Mendelssohn, was heavily influenced by the Bauhaus school of design. When asked to design the Einstein Tower, an observatory in Potsdam, he designed a futuristic tower which looks like a rocket. It was unlike anything seen before. Perhaps one of the most dramatic changes in the 1920s was in German cinema. This was a golden age for German cinema, with the science fiction film Metropolis generally acclaimed as the most technically advanced film of the decade. The film was produced by Germany's best-known director, Fritz Lang. German actress Marlene Dietrichs also became one of the most famous film stars in the world, often playing strong, mysterious and glamorous women. Unsurprisingly, not everyone in Germany approved of these extreme changes in the arts and the changes brought the Weimar Republic under attack from both the left and right. Those on the left wing, like the KPD, said the funding was money spent on extravagance when working people needed basic help. Those on the right, like the Nationalists and the Nazi Party, said the changes undermined traditional German culture. 
In summary, there were significant cultural changes in Weimar Germany in the 1920s. German artists like Otto Dix now focused on everyday life in their work as art started to reflect society at the time. Whilst in architecture, the Bauhaus style stressed the beauty and technology, simple lines and careful craftsmanship, and moved Germany away from the elaborate and decorative style of architecture seen before the war. And it was a golden age for German cinema, with the film Metropolis and the work of Marlene Dietrich spreading German cinema across the world. To get further help, visit history.outward.com, see your teacher in school, or check out quiz.outward.com for those sweet revision quizzes. You can also follow the Outward Humanities team on Twitter at OGAT Humanities. Until next time, that was a little bit of history. <laughs>